It's been a bit. Uh, I've had a whole bunch of people that have been approaching me, uh, asking me how I take models and uh, scale and slice them up to to make a lot of the, the larger projects that I do. Um, so I thought I'd just run through just a quick tutorial. Honestly, it's, it's just basic math. Um, I think that, uh, you know, uh, with a basic tool set, just use your slicer. In this particular case, I'm using Simplify 3D, but you can do the same thing with any other slicer out there. Uh, I use uh, Autodesk uh, Mesh Mixer, which uh, is a, a great freebie program and uh, will do a lot of the things that uh, that you'd, uh, well, yeah, a lot of things that you'd like it to do anyway. Um, <clears throat> For the sake of, uh, of this little example, we're going to take uh, Barad-dûr from uh, Lord of the Rings. Um, and so, you know, here you have it here. Um, we're looking at, um, you know, a 91 and some change millimeter uh, Z height on it. Um, on this particular printer, we're set up profile wise for uh, the uh, Fusion 3 Formax, or excuse me, uh, Fusion 3 F410 uh, build volume. We're doing you know 355 by 355 by 315. So uh, let's say that we want to make uh, this tower uh, three feet tall. You know we want to build it in real life and print it at three feet tall. So we know three feet is uh, 36 inches at 12 inches a pop. We're just going to go Google inches to millimeter. That gives us 914. 0.4 millimeters to get to the, the Z height that we want to make it three feet tall. So um, in uh, your change scaling, this is the same for all slicers. You have both a percentage as well as you have a millimeters. Um, you have this dialog box that says uniform scaling. Ideally, you want to keep this on for this function because when you change one uh, scale for either your height, your width, or your depth, depending on what, what you want your project to be, in this case, we know we want it to be three feet tall. What we want to do is we want to keep this checked, and that way it auto computes and changes the X and the Y so that it scales up proportionally. So in this particular case, we're going to change this to 914.4. So there you go. Um, now, in, this is where you know your basic math comes into play. Again, if we know that our z-axis is 315, we know basically that we need to chop this thing into thirds, uh, z-height-wise, first and foremost. The other thing that you can do, too, is you can take a gander here and look at your bed size in the slicer, and it gives you just a kind of a general idea of how many pieces you're going to need to slice this up into to fit on your bed. Uh, you know, I'm guessing we can probably get away with slicing this into, into quarters, here, you just got to kind of mark one, eyeball it, and uh, see where you're at. So we know we need to make three good slices, uh, Z height wise. Uh, so in the meantime, we've scaled this up. So let's go on ahead and export it. And let's do um, three, actually let's do scaled three foot. All right, so we now know that we've got it there. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap over. Actually, let's go on ahead and stay here for a second, and let's remove this because we'll be back to it. Let's go to Mesh Mixer, in which case we're going to import, and let's go down to Tower, and let's import our scaled three-foot model. And there you have it. So what we know, first and foremost, is that we have to chop this thing into three separate pieces. So let's go to plane cut. Now what I like to do here when I make my cuts, we already know by default that it drops in at the halfway point of the model, roughly. 
Um, I would bet that it's pretty distinct and close. So you kind of have to, you have to gauge it from here to this top point, what is roughly the halfway point, and that's roughly going to be somewhere up in here, which suits us to a T. What I typically like to do is I like to look for lines on a model that are already there, because that makes it that much easier to be able to hide my seams uh, when the time comes. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to do slice. We're going to do keep both. And then we're going to do remeshed fill. And what that's going to do is it's going to um, make a solid cap on both ends of that slice. And so that way uh, we don't have any open edges and they'll still be printable. So let's do that. And then let's do plain cut again. So here again, you know, we're we're at the at the middle point. I think uh, for the sake of keeping things um, nice and easy, um, we'll drop way down to roughly the halfway point here. And let's do the same. Let's do the slice, keep both, remesh fill, accept. And then just to make smaller, uh, smaller prints, we'll do it again right here in the middle of the default. So that's going to give us um, four pieces vertically to print. Um, so let's go on ahead and do that. Now, um, what we do have at this point is uh, obviously the tower is much narrower up here at the top. So we know that we can fit that on our bed. Uh, no problems. It's really from about this point here that uh, that we need to start separating stuff into into smaller chunks on the different axes. So let's go on ahead and let's do align. And what the align tool does is it uh, changes the orientation. Um, so let's do C up. So that changes the whole model to where it's on its side. The only reason that I tend to do that is it makes it a little bit easier to uh, do my slices by default without having to manually move them. So here we are with the model on its side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, separate shells. And what that's going to do is that's going to go on ahead and separate out the pieces that we've already cut off. And so here we have our entire base. And then it goes here here, here, and then there's a handful of little smaller pieces that have gotten chopped off in the process. You know, this is stuff that um, when you get more familiar with this process and you're familiar with how your printer prints, um, you're going to strategically place uh, these slices to make it um, easy to hide seams, um, easy to have nice flat planes for orientation on your prints so that, you know, your, your, the, the, the z-axis sides, which come out typically with the best finishes as opposed to a horizontal plane, you'll be prepped and ready for them to go on the on the bed uh, to print to their best resolution. Um, in this particular case, now from here down is really our problem child because all the rest of this, you know, this is a separate piece, this is a separate piece. We already know that this will print on the bed just fine in its orientation. So this is the one that we need to. Uh, uh, deal with next. So let's go on ahead and let's export these as, in, as individual files. Let's get up to the top here. So let's do export as to the tower and we'll just save it as one. Save and delete it. Then we can go to here. Export, we'll save it as two, save, deleted, here, we'll do export, three, save, deleted, let's do export, four, That. Okay, so 
that leaves us with this now. So what we can do is we can do edit, plain cut. There again, it's gonna go directly through the center. Same drill, slice, keep both, and accept. And then we can do a line again. Now X up is basically going to rotate it 90 degrees. Hit accept. Let's go to the back side. Let's do plain cut. Accept. And let's do separate shells. So what that does is that then separates this base into four quadrants. <clears throat> so now you have this, 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 and this. Now what you want to keep an eye out for is weird little stuff like this, um, where it gives us a couple extra files. Typically that's when I'll go back through and I will uh, re-slice it. Um, in this particular instance, I'm not going to. Uh, simply because I don't see any of those pieces highlighted, which tells me they're internal. And during the process, they've remeshed. But occasionally, these extra little pieces will be an external little detail. Sometimes it's critical. Sometimes it's not. It's just something that you want to watch out for. Um, ah, there it is right there. So basically, what it's going to do is you're just going to end up with a little flat spot right there. In this instance, I'm really not too worried about it. Um, so let's get rid of those two pieces. So now we have our four corners. Let's do export. And we're on to six. Seven. Eight. And if you notice, each of these slices, rather than this being a hollow plane because it cut right through, because we did remeshed fill, it basically created a flat side on this part of the model, which is ideal. That then gives you a chunk to uh, to glue to. If you are, uh, you know, super worried about not being able to match up and glue faces this large together, um, there are other tutorials out there for Mesh Mixer, which will show you how to basically insert um, a block uh, in here between this piece and the next piece. And so you can basically create a pin system that will help you align everything. Um, I'm lazy. Every once in a while, I'll put in the ex extra time to do that. But for the most part, um, it's not really that big of a deal, depending on what adhesives you're using. Um, almost everything I print is in ABS. I use a lot of ABS slurry. Um, so it gives me that dry time to be able to get everything lined up and clamped together properly um, to, uh, to get everything uh, lined up properly. Um, but uh, so an eight and nine. So in order to print this thing uh, three feet tall, we're looking at nine different pieces. So we go back on over here to simplify 3D. And now we can do reorient your parts and now congratulations you have uh, smaller bite-sized pieces that will fit on your printer that you can print you know if you wanted to uh, get this eye separated out it would be very easy to there again do the plain cut like I talked about do it here and here you can separate this piece and then you can reintegrate these other pieces uh, back together to uh, to get them into one solid uh, piece for printing and so that way you eliminate support structure. So it's not uh, just a handy tool for scaling things up and printing them larger. Uh, these techniques will help you chop pieces out of a model to save on support structure material. And, uh, um, you know, in a, in a case of an eye like this, you know, you very may want to be printing this in resin. So having it as a separate file would be uh, ideal. The nice part is that you could then uh, cut it right down the middle as well if you wanted to, if you want to put it in two halves. Um, if you wanted to use a semi-transparent filament, 
um, that would certainly make things uh, really slick. You'd have a flat face and you could slowly print up on your eyes. Um, so, you know, bear in mind the, the different techniques that you can, uh, you can do with this. But uh, in this particular case, uh, we can then do something like this. And if you were to take this and rotate it 90 degrees, uh, then that gives you the ability to print, you know, a couple pieces in one go. So uh, hopefully you guys find this tutorial helpful. If anybody has any questions, please don't hesitate to holler out and I'll uh, answer them as best I can. And uh, cheers and happy printing.